All right, so we're back for another painting tutorial. Today we're going to be painting Yandrasta, the Celestial Star. She is a one of the new Stormcast heroes from the Dominion box, uh, the biggest one, and a beat stick in the game, as far as I'm concerned. So we're going to start off with something fairly simple. We're going to do her wings first, and we're going to start off with Griff Charger Gray. And we're going to apply this completely over the wings first. And this is going to give us a nice blue undertone that will then come back and highlight over for the actual feathers. We're going to do white feathers on this. And so this blue underneath will give a, a really nice undertone for feathers. You'll see once we, uh, once we get on to the white why this blue works so well. Uh, but yeah, I'm just making sure to apply this smoothly, always moving in the direction of the feathers. Always making sure to do a the area completely before moving on to the next. Um, and just putting it on slightly lighter up here versus down here. We want a heavy application down towards the base of the wing and lighter as we move up. And that's just to help the, uh, help the uh, colors move from the base of her wings to the tip of her wings. Um, and so we're going to use sort of an off-white gray to do most of the wing, and then on the very tips of her wings we're going to do a very pure white. So we'll just do the other side now. So I'm just going to do this, get it all done, and then we will come back and move on to the next step. Alright, so our blue grayish wash is all dry. Now we're going to move on to some white scar. There's no significance of the air version, this is just the one I happen to have on hand. Uh, it's a little thinner than the typical one, but we're going to be dry brushing with it so it doesn't matter. Um, you take a big old brush and I'm just going to dry brush these wings. So, give this a good shake. And if you're unfamiliar with dry brushing, I will walk through it real quick. So I'm going to get paint on my brush just like I always would with any type of painting. Then I'll bring my paper towel over here so we can see it. So then I'm gonna tap off most of the paint. And then I'll test it on my hand. Still a little bit too much, I think. Just get a little bit more off, test it on my hand again. That's better. So now we're going to take these wings and we're going to only swipe in the direction of the wings. Like this. this branch is going to make it kind of annoying. And I'm actually, I, split, I originally said I'm going to go only in the direction. I think I'm going to go across actually. I think that'll work better for these particular wings. Get a little bit more paint on my brush. There we go. And this wing actually isn't glued on, so I'm not going to pull it off. And this will be easier to work with. So I'm just going to rub my brush over it like this. Um, this is why your undercoat needs to be very dry before you do this, because this rubbing motion will rub this blue color right off. Rub, all, rub the contrast paint right off. So there we go, and now we can see it next to our other wing that. This is what we started with. This is after the dry brush. And that's exactly what we're going for. So I'm going to do the other side now. Same exact process. Might need a little more paint. And just work it in, making sure to get all these ridges. This paint will dry almost immediately on your model, so that's why you can see I just put my fingers all over it. Normally you wouldn't do that, but this will dry very quickly, so it's not a problem. Just make sure to get all the nooks and crannies. All the edges are nicely highlighted. Alright, then we'll just check. Both sides look good. I think we need a little bit more on this side. So we'll get some more paint on the brush here. And grab some from down there. Make sure we get 
most, if not all of it, off the brush. All the wet paint, anyway. Obviously, there'll still be some paint on there, but... And then, I'm gonna come down here. There we go. That's better. That's more of the look we want. So now our feathers out here are solid, but these are still colored. I'm actually gonna come back here on this side and do a little heavier down here so that this outside range of feathers is a little brighter. There we go. So again, we'll compare to our unpainted. And there we have the difference. And then we'll go on to this side. And there you go. So I'm going to do this with the other wing. And then once that's all dry, like I said, it'll dry almost immediately. But once it is, I will come back and we'll do the next step. All right. So as you can see, our wings are drying over there. Now we're going to move on to the first step of the actual person herself. And we're going to use Black Templar for this. And this is going to be all the gaps in her armor. So her armor is going to be gold, obviously, being a Stormcast Eternal. But all the, the gaps are going to be in this color. So these joints right here are going to be black. Let me get those in there. Um, also, these straps on her wrist are going to be in gold. Um, the gap here between her, uh, her bust breastplate and her arm will be black. Her belt is going to be black as well. And we'll make sure we get the back of this. And then all this under here, we're going to paint black. It, most of it should be covered by the wings. But just in case, we're going to paint it this way so it still has a color on it. Make sure we get the belt all the way around. Excellent. All right, then we'll just make sure this gap there is covered. The gap between her arms and then these belts as well over here. Okay. Then this part here around her head, we're gonna paint that in in black. sure not to get, at least we're going to try to not hit her skin at all, because we would like to do that in a contrast color if possible. There we go. Then we just have the gaps behind her knees here and her shoes. So I'll go ahead and finish this up and grab any other little details that I see on her that need to be this color. Wait for that to dry, and then we'll come back and do the next step. All right, so our black is either dry or drying. But we're going to move on to a step that isn't really close to those parts, and for that we're going to use Nagaroth Knight. And we're going to paint the back of her cloak with this. The inside of her cloak is going to be uh, blue, but the outside here is going to be this purple color. So we'll just get this on here. We don't have to be super careful because all the parts around this cloak are going to be painted with layer paint, not contrast paint. But if we do happen to come near any of the black we've already painted, we would like to try to avoid that. And we will need two coats on this to, uh, to make sure that it gives a nice smooth finish on the cloak. So we will. So we'll get this coat on, making sure to pay attention where the front and the back of the cloak are, which I didn't do here, it looks like. Yep, that's actually the front of the cloak, so I'll have to fix that when I do the blue, but that's not a problem. I will just paint over it with blue, but just make sure that the the whole front, or the whole back is purple, and it is. And we're also going to do the edges in purple. We may have to come back and touch these up after we do the blue, but that's okay. I like doing it in this order, because the purple takes longer because you have to do a couple steps, and so I like doing easier steps first, or rather, easier steps last. So that's why I do the purple first instead of the blue. But no matter which one we do, we'd have to touch up the edges anyway, so. But yeah, so I'm going to let this first coat dry, then I'll apply the second coat, 
and then we'll come back and I think it'll be time to put the gold on the armor. Alright, so our purple is all dry, and I decided to make these things up here purple and these down here purple, because I like to always have the main colors of my model um, viewable from every angle, and from the front you can't really see any of the purple, so I wanted to make sure that there was some. So, now we're going to move on to the blue, right here, Fenrisi and Gray. And this is going to be put on the back of the cape, as well as the wrapping on the handle of the spear here and the sword. And if she has a dagger, nope, no dagger, so it won't be there. So like I said, the back of the, or the inside of the cloak here. And we'll probably have to tidy up the edges of the purple, but that's okay. We will do that in time. Make sure to get in here and get all these nooks and crannies of the cape. There we go. Make sure that we've gotten all of the sides here. And now we'll have to get this part that I messed up earlier. This is actually the inside of the cape folded over. So this will probably take two coats just to make sure this purple is completely covered. And we'll try to stay right on the edge as much as we can here. Good, there we go. So like I said, we'll need another coat on that, but I won't, uh, I'll do that while the rest is drying off camera. Just gonna get this little section in here. Good, that's the back of the cape folded over, so we don't need to get that. All right, so now we'll go on to doing the wrapping on the sword here and on the spear being careful to avoid the black there. So yeah, I'll finish this up, make sure that anywhere that needs a second coat gets a second coat, and then we'll come back, and then for real this time, it will be time to add the gold to the armor. Alright, so we're back with that blue all dried up, and I touched up the edges of the purple, as you can see here and over here. So we're all good there. So now we're going to go on to the gold, and for that we're going to use Peridot Alchemy from Scale 75. This is like a kind of a bright gold color. And this will be our base coat for the armor. So I'm just gonna put this out on a little pallet here. And we'll go to town. So this is just gonna be on all the armor, um, basically except the chain mail. And then we're gonna come back and highlight it with a silver afterward, but for now, we're just going to paint it all in in gold, and then we'll decide what needs to be silver and what needs to stay gold afterward. So yeah, I'm just going to go through this. This uh, Scale 75 paint is usually a little bit thinner than GW paint, so we'll probably need two coats in a couple places. So I'll just go through this, make sure it's all nice and solid as a color everywhere, and then we will come back and probably work on the chain mail and then add the silver highlights on the armor. So yeah, once this is all dry, I'll see you on the next step. All right, so our gold is all dry. And now we're gonna add our second gold. For this, we're gonna use Retributor armor. And this is just gonna be a couple details on the weapons and potentially in a couple other places, but I think just the weapons. So it's gonna be the hilt of the sword here. Or the cross guard, or whatever part of the sword this is. Just up to here, though, because the, the part above this will be silver. Good. And then the bottom pommel here. 
And then also the spear here, or the spear, in the same two places. Just being careful not to nick any of the colors we've already done. So it'll be here on the spear, and then also on the base of the spear down there. So I'm going to knock this out, let it completely dry, uh, check to see if there's any other places we want to put this color. I don't think there will be, but if there are, I'll add them too. And then we will come back and get on to the next step. All right, so our gold is all dry now. And I added it uh, right in here on this little decorative thing there. I thought it looked cool there, and it's similar to the color that it is on the uh, studio model. So, why not? Now, we're going to go on to Iron Warriors. And this is going to be for the chain mail or plate mail and the blades of the weapons. So I'm going to start with the, the mail here. This is a nice dark silver and will contrast nicely with both the lighter silver that we use later, but also with this very bright gold that we're using. So I'm just going to be careful not to, to nick any of our other colors. If I do, obviously it would be fairly trivial to fix, but I always try to avoid errors whenever I can. painting in the style that I am here though with just base colors and then highlights later and stuff um, it's much more forgiving than contrast paint contrast paint requires you to paint the primer color back over and then recolor it and all it's a it's a process this just paint right over it I think she, does she have any other chainmail no, I guess not. You can't really see the chainmail from the back, so I'm just going to make sure all the sides here are this color. Good. And then we'll do the blades of the weapon. You just want to make sure on whenever you're doing a blade with a metallic paint, because the, the metallic shards or bits, whatever, are in the paint, you just want to make sure that you go in long sweeping strokes so you get a nice flat finish. And by, I guess smooth finish is what I mean, not flat, because you know, the finish will be shiny. But a nice smooth finish, because these uh, the metal flakes in the paint will show any brush lines, any brush strokes, quite easily. So, And of course, make sure to get the sides of your blades. This one was skinny enough that it painted itself, but you want to make sure to get the side here. And then we'll do the other side. sure we got these oh they're part of the, the decorative part there so that's fine but yeah that will do it for this color we will let that completely dry and then we'll come back and work on her face a little bit I think all right so our silver is all nice and dry now and we're gonna move on now to gullum and flush for her face this is my go-to skin color just gonna make sure that we put it on pretty thin because we want her skin to be pretty pale, not a, not super tan like this uh, this color can give. She's a, I don't know exactly how Stormcast tans work with reforging. Do they do they keep their tan when they reforge, or does their skin reset to the original color? I don't know how that works, but. If she's been wearing a helmet for a long time, at least, we can figure that she'd probably be pretty pale. So there we go. Get a little more color up in there. All right, that'll work. So we're going to go just straight into the next color. And that's going to be Skeleton Horde. Oh, we're not very much left of this. Let's go. <laughs> Thankfully, we don't need it for very much. We're just going to use it for her hair here. She has white hair on the uh, 
on the actual model. Uh, it's painted by the GW artists, but I think that sort of a blondish white will look better. So I'm going to start with this and then I'm going to hit it with a little bit of this white scar. Again, no, uh, no actual reason why I'm using the air version, just this is the one I had. I don't actually have a pot of the other one. I'm just going to get most of the paint off my brush and my contrast paint on here is still wet. And I'm just going to, going to brush this in. And it's just gonna gonna mix in with this contrast paint and give us a sort of very bright blonde color. And that's what we're after. Just make sure to get all the way around her head. Like that. And back here as well. There we go. So there we go. Now you can see she's got she has it's still fairly pale, but there's just a hint of blonde there instead of the, the bright white that the studio did. So we're going to let all this dry, and then we'll come back and do the parchment here. Actually, you know what? Nah, we'll jump right into the parchment. Why not? We're going to use Ushabti Bone for this. Then we'll let things dry, and we'll come back and do all the silver, because the silver is going to take some thought. I'm going to have to think about where exactly I want all that silver. If I'm going to highlight the armor in it with it, or if I'm just going to pick out some bits that will be silver. We'll have to see. Maybe a combination of both. We'll see, but this is just going to be easy parchment. Make sure to get right up to the edge here. And grab this little corner right in there. There we go. And then make sure to get the back if we can see any of the back. And we can over here, so we'll get that. Excellent. Alright, that should do. So yeah, now we'll let everything dry. And then we will come back and do the silver. Alright, so everything is nice and dry now. And so we're going to go on to Stormhost Silver. And this is going to be for... The details that we're actually painting silver as well as highlighting her armor. So we're going to do the stuff that we're actually painting silver first. And that's just going to be these decorative pieces on her weapons. Make sure to get both sides of them, or all sides of them, but obviously the front and the back should be easy to remember to do, but don't forget to do the sides. And yep, that's the only one. And then grab this here. And again, make sure to get the sides. Don't want to leave any of this primer showing. Excellent. All right. So now, unless I'm mistaken, she is completely covered in paint. No primer is showing. Uh, obviously, except on the base. I'm talking about the, the miniature itself here, the model itself, the figure itself. I don't know. You know what I mean. So now I'm going to go in and start painting in some more details. So I'm going to paint the belt buckle here in this same color. All right, and now I'm going to start highlighting in this color. So I'm going to start with this face on her shoulder here. And I'm just going to follow the lines on the face and highlight them. Just getting into a good brace position so that I can follow these contours easily and effectively. Move to the other side. Make sure to get this right here. And this is sort of like edge highlighting, but I'm painting in more than I would if I was edge highlighting. There we go. All right, then I'm going to move to her chest, and I'm going to do a line down the middle here, and then like this, and like this, sort of like a 
like a swoop sort of down her down her breastplate and then I'll do a little bit of edge highlighting on these parts here and then just a little bit down there these I'm gonna highlight the center and then do a little bit of edging here I'm just kind of making it up as I go along her armor is supposed to be bright so we're just gonna we're gonna make it bright so now this eagle or hawk face on her knee sort of over brushing with silver here so leaving the gold in the recesses but painting the rest silver there we go I'm just gonna rinse my brush with using a small brush like this with metallic pigment your brush can often get clogged so it's good to rinse it off frequently just gonna edge highlight the kneecap here and then I'll do a, an edge highlight down the center and then I'll just quickly edge highlight the center of her foot here same thing here and center of the leg and then we'll put some highlights on these oh their cutout is only on the inside got it I'll just do that Let's see where else she needs it. I think up here, I'm gonna go along here. I'll do the middle of this and the edge of that. I'll do the edge of all these things here. Get up there. Just kinda swish my brush around there just to get some sort of appearance of shiny that I'm looking for. I like the fingers. I'm actually going to highlight this middle bit here. I'm actually going to do more than highlight it. I'm going to paint it, I think. And I'm going to come back and glaze that, maybe. So let's see where else she needs some more silver. Here. Oh, don't get it on the purple. We'll get that. We'll cover that up while the rest of this dries. Grab that. And do pretty significant highlight there some more there and then hit these and so yeah I think I've probably shown enough so you guys get the the idea behind my thought process so I'll finish this up do a little more wherever we need it and then once this is all dry I will come back and we can do the next couple steps all right, so we got that silver all highlighted up, and it's hard to see on camera, I think, but trust me, it's there, and hopefully in the final pictures it'll show also. So now I'm going to go on to some Xerius purple, and I'm just going to use this to highlight, shocker, the purple parts. So I'm just going to get a little bit of this, and just kind of go down the middle of each of these, just like this, not being too precise about it just so there's two tones on here just trying to stick to one side of it really so if there's runoff off the edge highlight it just stays on one side and do the back of these same way there we go and then we'll do some highlights on the cape here, or cloak, whatever it is. I think I've called it probably 50 different things in this tutorial, but whatever it may be. We'll just do some some swishes following the contours of the cape. That'll do. This looks, it looks much starker on camera. It's funny how some things show up and some things don't, but it's definitely not as stark as that on in real life. But that's okay, that means you guys can see it. So we'll let that dry, and I'm just gonna check real quick to see if we can do the next step. We can. We'll do the next step right now. We're gonna do her eyes. So for that, we're gonna use Aethermatic Blue. We're also gonna use this on a couple of the runes that are on her, or at least one, I'm not sure about a couple. But so we're just gonna get some of that and dot it in her eye and make sure it pools a little bit around her eye. So we want it to be like sort of magical energy coming out of her eyes here. I'm just gonna 
dab that back up just a little too strong in that eye. There we go. So now she's got some magical eyes. And then we're going to put it in this rune as well. And I'm not sure if there's another rune. We'll put it in there. I think this is the only one. Let's just take a look. Oh, that's right. Alright, so we've got that all dried up. And now we're ready to move on to potentially the last step of the model itself and that's going to be some null oil here and we're going to use a bigger brush and we're just going to apply this all over the model we're going to be careful where it goes though we want to make sure it doesn't get on anywhere too thick we just want it to go into the recesses and shade everything nice and evenly we don't want any large pools or anything like that. So we're just going to take care to move it around everywhere we want it. We're not going to do the face yet. We're going to we are going to do the face, but just not quite yet. And we're not going to do the hair either. We'll get a we'll get a smaller brush with a little bit more control before we do that. So we're just going to work our way all the way around the model. I'm going to do everything except the cloak first, and then I'll come back and hit the cloak. Just being careful. Um, some things can happen, which I'm actually noticing they're happening over here already. need to do my best to prevent that. Um, when you apply Null Oil like this, sometimes your bristles will flick off the miniature, and they'll flick little dots of color places you don't want it. So you're just going to make sure you avoid that, and you'll be all good. So there we go. So now we'll do the cloak. It's going to look too heavy at first, but we'll, we'll tone it back, don't worry. Just make sure to get it all evenly applied first. And then we'll just come back and grab it out of there where it's a little too thick. Let me just wipe off the excess and we just smooth it out. There we go. And then we'll just make sure that it's everywhere else we need it to be. Don't want to miss a spot with this. It'll stick out like a sore thumb. And now I'm just going through and anywhere where it's a little too heavily applied, I'm just dabbing it off. A little too much up there. Good there. Didn't get any back here, so I'll get that. Need a little more down here. All right, but there you go. There's there's the null oil applied. Um, a lot of people kind of have a misconception that null oil is only it's a very rough tool, and you can't really control what you're doing with it. But I think that really doesn't give the painter enough credit. I think if you're careful and know what you're doing, you can be very precise with null oil and it can really help out your paint job and do a lot of work for you. So now I'm gonna go to the face and I'm just gonna do a line here. Might've actually, yep, I got a spill on there of null oil, so we'll fix that up in just a second. It's a good opportunity to show off how to fix something like that. We're just gonna take this and we're just going to use this to show the hairline where it's been shaved. If you can see that right there. Uh, it looks like we have some stubble or something like that where she shaved the side of her head. And we're just going to put a little bit of this under this part of her hair as well. And just down here. There we go. And then maybe a tiny little bit in her ear. There we go. Perfect. All right, so now we have a little bit of a spill. Actually, I'm going to cut the video here, and we'll let this all dry, and then we'll come back, and I'll show you how to fix that uh, spill on our hair. All right, so we've got our null oil dried, or mostly dried, and I'm just going to use this as an opportunity. I went a little crazy with the null oil, and we got this spot right here on the back of our head. So if that ever happens, how do we fix it? So we'll go through it real quick. So... When we painted her hair originally, we first used Skeleton Horde, 
and then white scar. So in this case, we're going to do the exact opposite of that. So we're going to take white scar first, and we're just going to cover over this spot here that had the offending null oil. And just make sure to blend it out into the hair. Just like that. Then we'll give that a couple seconds to dry. Um, I'm just going to point out a couple things while that was drying. Um, or while that's drying, rather. Um, while the null oil was drying, I was coming in with my very small brush here. And just anywhere, any, like, actually, here's a spot right here. Any spots where it's just a little too heavy and it looks like it's not going to dry completely flat, I'll just go in with my brush very gently and smooth it out. And just rinse it off and then go again just looking over the miniature anywhere where it might be drying just a bit too heavy checking checking maybe right down here in this crevice here so I'm just gonna run my brush very gently along there pull out you don't want to tear the surface of the null oil that's why I'm going gently and then just looking looking I don't see any other spots so I think we're good um, but our white is dry now. So now we'll go back to our skeleton horde. And we'll just go right over the top of this. Just like that. And then just like we did the first time, back to skeleton horde, or sorry, back to white scar very small amounts just blend that in to the rest of the hair just a little bit more there we go and there we go now her her hair is there's no evidence of any spillage just double check the correction from this side. But yeah, there we go. We're back to, if I can get the camera to focus on it, we're back to normal looking hair, which is exactly what we wanted. So that's the easy way to fix it. Um, any, basically how this would work on anything instead of just these exact colors, you take your, whatever color you used as a wash in the case that was this, uh, sorry, you'd start with whatever color you used as a highlight. You'd paint that completely over it. Then you'd go with your wash, or the color you used to color it, if you didn't use a wash. In that case, it was this. And then you'd go back with the highlight color again, and do the same thing you did the first time you highlighted it. That will cover over the null oil just fine. Um, starting with the highlight color will blend it into the existing paint very well. Then you go back with your actual... Um, wash or color go over it to get yourself back to the first step when you originally did it and then you just highlight it again as normal but yeah that's going to do it for this person I guess I'll uh, stick the wings on and you'll see pictures obviously um, but that'll do it for this video I'm going to have a second video which should be out at the exact same time um, which will be her base I'm just doing them separately uh, because it's going to be a long video, even just her. And some people may just want to watch the painting of her. Some people may be more interested in the swamp base that we're going to do. So that's why I'm doing it separately. But yeah, you'll be seeing pictures now of her with her wings all on and ready to go. And then, if you enjoyed this, then maybe go check out the second video, which is the swamp base. Thank you everybody for watching, and I will see you on the next one.